Welcome back, everybody! We'll play more stasis without Eddie, because no one likes Eddie. Oh, wait. This is the good stuff. It's not that no one likes Eddie. It's that everyone dislikes Eddie. <laughs> you know, it feels less um, funny when he's not here to respond to that. I really hope he w listens to this or watches this video later and is like, Hey! Yeah, I guess it does kind of make me feel like a bully if he's not around. <laughs> I developed that behavior with a lot of the other developers we used to work with, like Mark. Uh, one of one of the uh, designers we worked with back in the game or er, Cobalt Conquest days, which was what like two and a half years ago. Yeah, it's been a while. Also, look at all the dead bodies. That is that is awesome. I want to go in there. The best part about this room is that its sole purpose is to show us all these dead bodies. There's nothing we could do with it. <laughs> Just be like, oh my! <laughs> Just piles of dead. That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> um, but back in the Cobalt Conquest days, Mark was one of our game designers. Um, and we I think we generally had him do a lot of the level design stuff. Um, but he ended up being kind of the, uh, this actually scared me when I was playing because I was just like, I don't know what to do. I'm just going to click on every one of these cages until something happens. And then that happened. I was like, oh God, that was not, not what I thought. Also, them ambiences. Man. But poor Mark, he did become the punching bag every now and then. Oh yeah. I mean, it was just because he was so innocent that it was so easy to, to pick fun at him. That is legitimately what it was. Because Mark is still a good guy. Oh yeah, he's a good guy. He's just... Even if he needed to be micromanaged. He's... Yeah. Mm. Oh. Yeah, we just got gassed. Oh. Yeah, boy. Shit's going down. I did tell you at the end of last episode that shit was going to go down. Did I not? Yeah, I mean, you did. I... <laughs> I, uh... I just didn't expect us just to get, like, our ass kicked just there. Just one-shotted? Yeah, one-shot. That's a good one, yeah. <laughs> Well, the thing is, that all happened in a cutscene, too, so I actually had no control. The The strange thing about it is that that scene doesn't happen until you look at both the door full of, or the room full of dead bodies, uh. and then go to the room full of cages, and then back to the center. So that's why when I hit this point, I was running around the cage room, and I was like, what do I do? I don't know where, there's nothing here. <laughs> and then, obviously, it eventually happened to me, and I was like, oh. Well, I guess I could have spent 15 minutes less poking around in that room full of cages. Oh, well, I was gonna say, did you feel cheated in that moment? Because oh, it no. didn't actually... No, it, it tricked me. It, it, in the end, I think I liked it. It was just... Unfortunate. Enough! I'll see you soon, Give my thoughts to you. Mr. Maracek, you sneaky to Dr. Oblivion. <laughs> Not to worry, I can speed up this little family reunion. See that giant door in front of us? Rebecca. Yep. Remember how you uh, were talking about how it'd be crazy if your daughter was some horrible giant uh, mutated Rebecca. monster? Yep. Well, that's not the case. <laughs> Look at her. She's so cute. She's just playing around in her little room. Look at all those little toys. It's so cute. Enjoy Dang, we got a good daughter. I'm off to deal with Judas. Let's uh, let's get her out of there before anything bad happens. Come on, no, no, no. What's what's going on? Come on, come on. No. Yup. So, games, in game culture, people tend to freak out when kids are killed in games, and rightfully so. Killing a kid is probably one of the absolute worst things that could ever happen. Absolutely. But I'm one of those people that are of the opinion that it shouldn't always be excluded from a game, specifically because there is a, uh, a stigma against it. I feel like this is a very good example of it being used successfully, because 
it's this was worse than our daughter being turned into a monstrosity. Uh, I mean, yeah, yes and no. If if they if they did the monstrosity thing, it would have been um, the typical save the princess scenario that uh, what's her name um, did the videos about. I can never remember her name. I'm uh, terrible about it. Uh, uh, and Anita. Uh, yeah, yes. Uh, damn! Wow, I'm usually better at remembering her name because I follow her on Twitter, not in real life. <laughs> but oh, this is terrible. Yep. So we gotta use her teddy bear to uh, get the her blood for the DNA scanner. Why did he even keep that room a thing? Like, why did that doctor even have that area? He wanted to kill your daughter in front of you. That was literally the entire point of him setting that up. That's why he gassed you and brought you here. His little spiel before this was him saying like, "You took my children away from from you took my children away from me. So let me return the favor and do the same to you." Mm. Um, and yeah, I mean. I, I don't feel like he's justified, but he uh, in a he kind of wins. Way you can see where he's coming from. Yeah, and in that sense, he he sort of wins. Like now we lost the entire point of us trying to survive. Uh, we still have the wife, right? We have our wife, but Rebecca was our main goal. Yeah. Um, like it's not to devalue our wife in this game, but. It was very clear I mean, that usually he, he, in a, in a game or a story like this, the spouse is the first one to go. So it's actually very unusual in that regard. Yeah, no, that's actually very true. Oh, but that's what I was talking about. The save the princess complex is usually it's like, <laughs> like your daughter or your wife turns into something hideous and you have to pity kill them. And mm. it's and in this case, that that is not what happened. No, that's that's definitely true. I I think that this outcome is far more dark than a. Uh, Maybe that's just like games having um, make have have maybe games have made me jaded to that other scenario where uh, yeah because it seems a little overdone and so yeah, that's possible. So I think this will be the finale, believe it or not. Oh okay. We are very very close to the end. I mean our daughter just died so yeah. If they stretch the game on much farther, it'd be uh, kind of ridiculous and take away from that moment. Yeah, and I mean this this might still go a little long, but um I think we can expect to see all the crazy stuff wrapping up in this one. No lights. Keep your head down and stay away from the walls. And listen. You'll hear him before you see him. Yes, okay. Okay. And at this point we almost feel like our friend here is the only one we have left. You know? Yeah, I mean, up until this point, it was a little, I was a little suspicious of her, but whether that we're suspicious of her or not, at this point, we know that this dude is obviously the bad guy. Like, right, right, exactly. He's the reason this all happened, and all of the PDS thus far have proven that to be true. Because you know, he's a sociopath in the utmost sense of the term. So this, this puzzle I actually thought was pretty clever. So we get a prosthetic arm, right? Ooh. And we, I, ideally we stick it in here to shut down this door, but we have to actually combine the remains of the glove with uh. the arm. Uh, I, I definitely electrocuted myself first time around. <laughs> But I got an achievement for it, so, you know, I'm not complaining. I, I, yeah, there, I mean, there has to be an achievement for every way of dying, because if you think about it, because this game, because as a click of point adventure, it's so streamlined in what you're supposed to do, um, the only way to be clever about it and find little secrets it means that you have to die. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Which I found out, by the way, that there are... So, I ended up getting all the achievements for getting killed in this game. But as it turns out, there are like five or six achievements to perform suicide. So we were joking about it about two episodes back, but there actually are ways to kill yourself. Like on pur- like- Like on purpose. Also I love this. This is definitely- this achievement's a call out to Dead Space without a doubt. The achievement was stomp, and we literally just stomped this <laughs> hybrid. And uh, if you've ever, I don't know if you've ever played Dead Space, um, 
but that's like the mechanic of the game. Oh no. You. Hmm. She's fine. <laughs> She's totally fine. She's not fine. She's not, not when you tell me that. Please, be careful. Keep her under. The last time I woke someone up. So let's just, you know, clog these cogs with intestines. I feel like this this guy's already killed, like, about, I don't know, a dozen people or whatever, and none of them have been bad guys. They've all been, like, pity kills or um, accidental, or it's kind of interesting, actually. No, it's incredibly interesting. Almost at the hangar. John? I need to explain the situation. <coughs> well, well, Mrs. Then it looks like you've brought our friend along. Hello! Tia! Shit's going down. So the PDAs, PDAs in this room are actually kind of interesting. They, uh... Although, although, you, you just found out that she gets captured and everything, and then you're like, ah, oh, just read this PDA real quick. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's always the downside of having little pickups like that in some games. I think toward the end, it's actually, I mean, we've already talked about how, like, the PDAs kind of slow down the game a lot in a way that isn't always beneficial. Yeah. Um, especially at the, toward the end, like, when we're reaching the climax, you should want absolutely nothing that's going to slow down your game. You're going to want the player to just keep that flow going until they mm -hmm. hit the highest point and then have the resolution happen. Um, so I think, you know, while the PDAs were throughout the rest of the game and while, you know, it was kind of detrimental before, it's not the worst thing in the world, right? But at this point, it's really bad to be having them slowing things down. In fact, some of these puzzles, I feel like they're a little arbitrary at this point. Because it's like, oh, oh well, my. this is disturbing. Things have escalated to this point where it's <laughs> I'm basically walking inside of an organism. Well, how much do we have left? Because we could actually go for another episode. I think I think we're we've got maybe five minutes left. All right. So we'll we'll keep this going. I suppose if it really ends up being super long, we'll just end the episode here. So, yeah. <laughs> but otherwise, we're gonna be all like. Welcome back, even though we're, we never actually left. Bam. See that? I set all that up so I can cut it if I need to. <laughs> <laughs> That's why so, they pay me the big bucks. What on earth did we just look into? So this is a, like a, uh, like a, I don't know, some kind of, what do you call them? Like construction machine with like those giant scoopy parts. I forget what they're called exactly. Kind of like those bobcat things. I, whatever. It's called a loader here, um, oh, and okay. it's just like covered in growth. And we took a power cell out of it and a plasma cutter that was sitting nearby, which uh, plasma cutter is also a, a big callback to uh, Dead Space because that is <laughs> the weapon of choice. These creatures are following their base instincts, breeding, eating. How, are, how do they make a hive, though? Like this. And where are they if this is their hive? Yeah, right. Well, there's there was a lot of little ones just kind of squirming around inside the fleshy growth on the floors and stuff. But yeah, they like... They never really attack us, even though we're in the yeah, middle of their hive. I was gonna say, actually, just in general, I, you see like the threat of people dying all over the place and getting killed by hybrids and stuff like that. But or... the hybrids never really, like the worst it gets is when that one dropped down from the ceiling and killed itself trying killed to kill itself. us. And then there was the other one where it, it completely ignored us and ate the dead body next to us while we were in, <laughs> while we were performing spinal surgery. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Like, they, they still kind of work for scaring us sometimes, but I feel like they miss too many opportunities to actually follow through with that and so you're just going around just stomping on dead bodies now and just taking body parts? This was a, a human. Um, so I think the idea was we were supposed to go to the third room before we realized that we needed an eyeball. But in classic click and point ad adventure style games, we're going to find items and we're going to be like, I don't know what we need this for, but clearly our guy thinks we need this. <laughs> I don't know why he thought about an eyeball, but that is what was on his mind at the time. This is also another... Th 
um, challenge where I feel like there's an unnecessary step to go back. Um, so the PDAs, I, I started talking about this earlier, but the PDAs in that room go through a story of like these two that went into hiding and ended up like making this little pod that we're driving around. And uh, one of the guys ends up getting locked inside that freezer and there's no way to unlock it. So he basically like, after spending all this time with this one guy and going through all their like, you know, hating each other and eventually becoming friends, he ends up killing him accidentally and being all like, no, what have I done to my only friend? That That's pretty terrible. But that's how we know that we can unlock it and find a body in there. And oh, we can use his eyeball to unlock this eye detection panel. <laughs> I really don't think that was necessary. It literally, its whole point validates that having that story there, because otherwise that story would be Kind of silly and pointless, yeah. No, I mean, that's fair. That's a good way to integrate your... your uh your narrative into your game and actually make it relevant to the mechanics of the game. Yep, yep. That's, that's awesome. <clears throat> oh, this part's actually kind of cool after we start up this machine and burst through here. Um, but this is kind of your, the zone where we kind of get a full recap of the history that happened before this point. Um, so this is where they talk a lot about the, um, the um, eugenics war and uh, kind of the guy that got this whole organization started. It's cool. We're not going to sit and listen to it, though. <laughs> so, you know, there's, there's something for you to uh, look forward to, anyone that wants to buy the game. You're welcome, the Brotherhood. <laughs> <laughs> so this is, uh, room, we find all these lifeboats, but... If we hover over each of them, they all say that they're broken or they don't have any fuel, which presumably the broken ones have no fuel, so... So, you know, basically saying there is no way out. Yeah, yeah, that is the entire point of that room. This, right here, what he says, that is the theme of the game. Without a family, man, alone in the world, trembles with the cold. Man without a family dies alone in the cold. Um, and... As we go through the game, it kind of comes up subtly, but right at the end, I feel like we have a really good conclusion, so you'll get to kind of see. Murderer! You really are a roach, Mr. Maracek. John, shoot him! Kill him now! Oh, but now you're not holding her hostage anymore, so... <laughs> right? So suddenly, it becomes really easy to just shoot him, and we're conveniently on a power pad. How about that? Goddamn monster. Monster? By whose standards do you call me a monster? The morals of men don't apply to gods. Yeah, he's a little crazy. Well, let me just take my sweet time, grab his <laughs> plasma cutter, and I'm just gonna shoot. No, I'm not gonna shoot. I'm gonna shoot this thing. Because <laughs> little did you know, he actually has a force field. So if you shoot him, he just kills you. Ah, you Which, should have showed us that. Uh, I, you know, I debated this actually for a little while, but I decided ultimately, you don't get that much more out of seeing it other than being like, oh, he has a force field. Now let's play through the last ten minutes and get back to this point. <laughs> what what happened to our character? So we fell down, presumably quite a distance, and we broke our leg. Why is there so much blood? Well, have you ever had a, an external fracture? I don't know the proper term, but, you know, where your bones are sticking out of your limbs? I'm sure that would cause a lot of blood everywhere. I suppose. She's here. Well, look at that cry, that stasis chamber sitting in the middle of the room. Yep. It's all. It's all. <laughs> It's over. It's over. It's over. It's over. I'm sorry, it wasn't supposed to end like this. Waking you was a mistake, John. But I'm happy to have met you. A little consolation. I understand. Tia, what do you mean? You woke me. Answer me! 
We needed a way to transport the research off the Groom Lake. And your wife's bone marrow was a perfect storage device. Research? This is about fucking research? Yes! It's about research. Worth billions, John. Billions. So you caused all of this. You let those things loose. <laughs> no, I'm not that sloppy. The idiots we sent to get your wife's body turned off all the containment protocols. We lost Ellen in all the chaos. That pussy Yuri was on his way to you when Milan got involved. <sighs> on his way to get my DNA. It was the only way to locate the data carrier in the ship best. Old man Kane will be rolling in his grave when I sell his secrets. You're just like Milan. Is that what you think? John, do you love your wife? Well, I love my husband and Kane's security forces murdered him during a protest. Kane Corporation took everything from me and now I will burn them to the ground. You don't have to do this. You don't. Two stasis puts on. It's never gonna happen. The lady graphic coordinates confirmed. Autopilot has been engaged. Time to depart. Yeah. Yeah. So that happened. It sort of was expected. It, um, even going back to uh, when we were in that um, what was it? The uh, the place with all the plants. Remember how I mentioned like if she was from that zone, shouldn't she know about the giant bee and all that stuff? Because that's what she said at the beginning mm -hmm. of the game. That was kind of our first hint that she wasn't all she, you know, was saying she was. So I don't really know what I just picked up. Oh, I picked up a, a thing. I don't really know what it is. John's personal data test? So, well, we've had this this whole time. Yeah. But now, watch this. Suddenly... Mm. We Suddenly can't do anything. we actually scroll over her instead of the... Oh, I think maybe I have to wait for her to be over here. Yeah, there we go. Yeah. Fuck you. So I think the idea was that those guns were already targeted on us. So throwing our data tag at her activates them huh um and maybe that's maybe what we picked up was the remote that uh that doctor had so we just had to throw it and then turn the guns on right mm -hmm. um which you know makes sense but now we uh destroyed the other stasis pots so there's literally only one now <laughs> just to twist the knife, just to be like, by the way, you had, <laughs> you, instead of getting out, using your daughter's blood, using your wife's body. <laughs> and there we have it. We send her on her merry way. We, uh... If you also, I don't know if you caught this, but he changed the location that we were sending her. Oh, I didn't catch that, no. So she so was, was going like, to send... I guess he's going for billions of dollars anyway? Yeah, yeah no, he changed her destination pro presumably to their home planet or, or something. Um, but either way, no one's going to find the data in her bone marrow now. And, you know, I think John is assuming that she'll get there and then someone will take her out of stasis and then she'll be all happy and dandy, right? Mm -hmm. But now he knows he's going to die. On the other hand, I feel like being abandoned on this ship isn't the worst because even though there's a million of t broken stasis pods, I mean, he could perform surgery on himself. He could probably find a way to make one of those broken... Uh, lifeboats work. He's got all the time in the world. I right? Mean, the, all the technology that he would ever need is right there. Exactly. And he's a brilliant guy. I mean, he survived against all odds. I, I, you know what? I would say his chances of survival are like mm, two to five. Yeah, and I'm sure someone else is going to come on the ship. That's the final uh, twist of the knife, just to show you that she was actually dead this whole time. Mm-hmm. Which, I understand why they did it, but I actually didn't like that ending. But here's why I do like that ending, to contradict myself. Okay. The theme of the game is 
man without a family dies alone in the cold. That basically is telling us that we are actually alone this whole time. Yeah, that's true. And him dying in this ship by himself is the perfect uh, form of that theme. I mean, also, it shows that if his wife was already dead in a stasis pod, he had a chance to escape. Yes. And he decided not to. Mm-hmm. And, and his daughter's fate was already decided because the doctor, Dr. Milan, already had him, already had her. She was purely just waiting there to get killed for in front of John. Yeah. Her fate was decided way ahead of time, too. So this whole time, John has just been alone. That, that I would say, is, is perhaps a proper horror story. Right? But it's also good use of theme. I feel like... In the end, I didn't realize this theme was so present until the end where it was just like, oh my god, it was always to, there! It took a lot to converge in on itself, mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. now that's well done. Yeah, right? right I, I'm happy with that it's ending good. for the most part. Yeah, that's, that's why when I was upset initially about finding out that her wife was dead, as I continued to think about it, I was like, no, she had to be dead. That was the only way to make this game full circle. Yeah, yeah, no, absolutely. Because if there was any amount of hope, then this story isn't over yet. Yep. As abysmal as that sounds. Yeah, no, exactly. So, that's that stasis. I mean, it was it was a blast. It was a lot of fun. But thanks for thanks for watching. And do you um, do you have any final thoughts before we well, close it out? Um. Hmm. Oh, I talked. I chatted with uh, one of the developers on Twitter, by the way. Who uh, was very appreciative of us playing this game, um, but uh, he he commented on uh, some of our feedback on sound effects, and he was like, "Oh, actually, these are some things that I definitely wanted to fix for the next game around." Um, so that was actually pretty cool. He was oh, he was very he humble it. about our feedback. No, that's good. Um, that's, and I was even I like, I, I even responded. I was like, "Yeah, we get pretty nitpicky because we have been like overall. I actually really liked this game, even if we nitpick a lot about the little things. Um, but in the end, it's it still is a really great game." And his response was, "Nitpick away." Yeah, I mean, if you're gonna do talk, if you're gonna have a design show, you kind of got to talk about all design elements. You can't just be vague about it because then that's not true design. Exactly. Yeah. Um, so sometimes it might seem like we're trying, we're you know, crapping on some games more than we mean to, but we're not actually trying to say the games are uh, bad. Um, but no, no, I'm. I mean, I know I was a little bit critical at the beginning of this, and that's just because click and point adventures I tend to be very critical of because they only have so many elements that they can mm-hmm. utilize, and whenever I see any missed opportunity, immediately. I get like a little aggressive about that, <laughs> um, and so there, you know, other than the occasional like occasional typical thing that a click and point adventurers suffer from, which is what the hell do I do right now? Yes. Other than that, uh, this is actually one of the best ones I've I've played or at least experienced. Um, yeah, glitches aside, art issues aside, um, even even the you know classic point and click adventure issues aside. Um, I feel very, very satisfied with this game, and I'm happy we chose to play through this one. I would say the voice acting really did help sell it. Mm-hmm, so good mm-hmm. job on getting good voice actors because that, that right there was absolutely necessary to your game. And even even the PDAs, um, while we griped about them a lot, I read them all um, in my personal playthrough, and they they really did help round out everything, and they made it more satisfying. Um, my complaints about it slowing down the game still stand. Um, so I think that that content could have been implemented in a different form or in a better way. Yeah, I don't know. That's hard. When your game is only so long and it's and it's made to be an adventure like that, how do you implement those without slowing the game? And the only thing I, I have easily to say is cut down the amount of content that you've included. Mm-hmm. Um, but I don't know if that's necessarily a, the good way to go. So, huh. yeah, um, man, but that's about all I got. Cool. Yeah, that's all I've got, too. So thank you, everybody, for watching. Um, Let us know what you thought of the whole playthrough in the comments. And definitely uh, let us know what you want us to... What what you would like us to play and for you to watch in the future. We've already had a request to play Five Nights at Freddy's. So that's possibly in the future. But we also have a couple of games on our list, too. So... All right. Fair enough. So, yeah, send us your requests. Um, We will prioritize those over anything that we we want to play too so um because i want you know you guys to feel involved and i want you guys to enjoy what we do too so i mean even that we love feedback too but that's beside the point 
Oh, he loves feedback. I'm just going to yell at you if you try to give us feedback. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good thing you don't moderate the channel then. Yep. <laughs> I'll just send on to random accounts and just be like, what do you mean? <laughs> All right. Well, thank you, everybody, for watching, and we will see you in the next series, whatever it is. Adios. Bye. See you in the archives.